Hello and welcome back. I am very excited. We are going to start our hands-on. To make sure you understand every concept along with the code, some videos can be lengthy. So make sure you watch them till the end. By the end of every video, I'll share one bonus or interview tip that will definitely help you. Now, you must have basic knowledge of Python and SQL to complete this journey. If you are new to Python, I'll add one link in the description to get you started with Python. Before we start, we need an environment in our local to practice. To follow me along, you can check out third video of my YouTube series Data Lakehouse Data Warehousing with PySpark. This third video provides the specific installation instruction of PySpark on Docker. And this is the same environment I am going to use for this tutorial. This is my JupyterLab environment. I'll write code in Jupyter Notebooks. Now I prefer Notebook for now so that we can run each command individually and understand what is happening in background. For today's example, we will generate an employee data set and we will filter out employees having salary greater than 50,000. Then we will write the data set as in form of CSV into our output location. Now before we can write our program, we first need a Spark session. We know Spark session is a driver process that is the entry point for our Spark application. To get the entry point, we need a Spark session object. And to create an object, we need a Spark session class. The Spark session class can be imported from PySpark.sql module. Now you can name your Spark session object anything. You can name Shubham, you can name Apple, you can name anything. So let's create our Spark session object. To create, we will use this builder method from the Spark session class. Spark session dot builder. Now we need to name our Spark application. To name, you can use app name and you can put any name. Let's put Spark introduction. Since we are working in local, we will use the master, which is the location where this code will be executed. For now, we will keep the master as local. In brackets, we will put it at star. Star will allow us to open the number of worker threads equal to your logical code. For my machine, the logical code number is 8. So it will open 8 worker threads to work in people. And at the last, we need to call get or create method. Now, this is a generic code for Spark session object. This will remain same for majority of your code. However, we can add few configs to this, which we will see in the later part of our course. For now, this generic Spark session will work for us. Let's execute this cell. Now, the cell execution is complete. Let's go ahead and check what this Spark session object is. We get some information when we execute this cell. We have the version of the Spark, the master and the application name that we used. Along with this, we see one more thing, Spark UI. For every Spark session object we create, Spark provides us with an application UI. To open the application UI, you need to go to localhost 4040. Let's open the UI. This is the Spark UI. We will learn about Spark UI in more detail as we move along through the course. For now, we will just check SQL slash data frame tab from this UI. This tab lists the query that are executed for structured API. Since we are dealing with structured API, any execution code that we run would be listed as query in this tab. We can come back and see our query executions in this tab. Now, since we have created our Spark session object, let's create our employee data and schema. This is our employee data and this is our schema. Employee data is a list of lists. Each list is an employee record. Now, we also have the employee schema where we have columns like employee ID, department, name, age, gender, salary, hire date. For now, we are using string as a data type for all the columns. Now we have the data and the schema. Let's create our first data frame. We will use EMP as our name of the data frame. We will use the Spark session object as Spark. Dot, we will use one method called create data frame. 
in this method we will have two parameters the first one is data which is equals to the employee data that we have just created in the above cell next is schema again we have the employee schema let's run this cell okay the execution is complete now if we go back to our spark ui and refresh nothing happens let's go back to our spark session and let's validate what are the number of partitions for this data frame if you remember from our previous discussion spark reads data in form of partitions so whatever data frame we create would be built up in number of partitions let's check the number of partitions for this employee data frame for this we need emp.rdd.getNumPartitions. partitions if we run this we see it has eight partitions if we go back and refresh our screen nothing yet now let's see what is the data in this employee data frame for this we put emp dot show now show is an action here if you remember actions are responsible for creating jobs let's run this action Okay, we can see our data now. Let's go back and refresh our data frame screen. Great, this is our first query which has been created as soon as we call our actions. For this, three jobs has been created. Let's write our first transformation. We know we need to filter out employees with salary greater than 50,000. For this, we have an employee data frame, but we know data frames are immutable. It implies we cannot change anything about EMP data frame, but we can create a new data frame out of that data frame. Let's create EMP underscore final as a new data frame from EMP data frame, where salary is greater than 50,000. Now, if you can correlate, this where condition is similar to SQL what we use. Let's run this cell. If we go back in our Spark UI and refresh, nothing happens because Spark prefers lazy evaluation. Until we call an action, no transformation will be executed. Let's validate our employee final data frame partitions. It is still 8. If we go back and refresh, nothing happens because we have not called any action yet. Now, let's write our data in form of CSV. Again, writing the data to output is an action. Let's write our EMP final data frame. To do that, we will use EMP underscore final dot write dot format. Our format would be CSV. And we will write the data into our output location. Let's execute this cell. Okay, the cell execution is complete. Let's go back and refresh. Great, we have one more job created because write is again an action. This completes our demonstration for today, but this helps us to understand a few things about Spark. First, Spark prefers lazy evaluation. It implies we can write n number of transformations, but those transformations will not be executed until we call an action. Second, we can use Spark UI, which is the application UI, to understand what is happening in the background for our jobs. Spark also provides an interactive shell that we can use to start working with Spark. Let's open that interactive cell. Since my installation is a custom installation, I will the Spark command from slash Spark slash bin slash by Spark. 
Now, this is an interactive shell that Spark provides. You can start writing the code here and it will start working. You can see the master is local here and we already have a Spark session created as Spark. So if we write Spark, this is a Spark session which is already available to us. So we don't need to create a new Spark session to start working. We can go ahead and write our data film transformations here directly. Now the bonus tip of the day. Since Spark session is already provided in this interactive cell, is there some way I can use a different name for a Spark session? The answer is yes. Consider I want to use Shubham as a Spark session name. To do this, what I'll do is I will use Shubham equals to Spark dot get active session. Once I hit enter and I type Shubham, see now Shubham is a Spark session object. I can use this object to create my data frame. And both Shubham and Spark are pointing to the same address location. This is again an important interview question. So this is all for today. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing, keep growing.